Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and today we're gonna go over the massive, massive lawsuits right now against the National Association of Realtors. The odds are over the next few years, there's gonna be massive changes in the real estate industry as far as how agents can collect their commission. Now, you guys often hear me say that in order to sell your house, it takes roughly 8% on average to sell your house. Now, of the 8%, normally 6% goes towards the realtors and normally that amount is paid by the seller so the reality is is the seller actually pays for the buyer's realtor and obviously that could be a huge conflict of interest now it's obviously how the industry is set up i believe many many changes need to happen so today again we're going to look at really what's going on with nar we're going to look at the update of these lawsuits we're going to look at a couple companies that have already settled and then we're going to take a look at what the national association of realtors is actively doing right now to get ahead of all of these massive, massive problems. And please don't forget, I am not a financial advisor, even though my bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in real estate in Texas. And if you guys can, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Please do not forget to shoot me a comment below, hit notifications, and please, you guys, share this video. Now, I'm often asked is why has it taken so long for someone to do something about the National Association of Realtors and how realtors are being paid? Now, I believe a huge reason that is, is because of all of the money that the National Association of Realtors pumps into political parties. Let me show you. Now, this information is from opensecrets.org. Now, this is the National Association of Realtors total contributions. Now, they rank as far as total contributions, number 40 out of 30,000, the total lobbying that they contributed towards in 2022, you guys, was a minimum of $81 million. Again, they spent $81 million lobbying in 2022. Two, that is absolutely outrageous. You can actually go to their site and they'll break this down for you. Everything will be linked in my description, but this is absolutely crazy. They're basically noting who they were supporting as far as 2021 and 2022 presidential candidates. To me, I kind of feel like that money should probably be going to training and educating agents to make it to where society can properly lean on them instead of throwing money into a pen, hoping that your boy wins so that you get something out of it. Where's the training? Where's the money going back to strengthening agents? Look at this, y'all. Let me scroll down here. And it's actually way worse than this. This is just being reported from them. They're talking about the 2022 federal political funding. They're only saying they contributed 50 million, but it is way more than 50 million. And it kind of breaks down where they're spending that money. But again, I'm thinking that they should take this money and put it towards the community. Help the community, help homeowners, help future homeowners, help someone other than politicians. Maybe that's what's wrong with things. People are so greedy and so stuck in power, they think that they can never change because they wanna hold on to the power, they wanna hold on to that status. But the thing is by doing so, the people on the bottom are getting absolutely wrecked. Now Todd Sachs helped me understand this. The problem with, there's a lot of problem with realtors, but let's not forget that usually that problem starts at the very top, which is the National Association of Realtors. Let me show you a little bit about who has settled lawsuits already. Now, starting out with Remax, Remax just settled the commission lawsuit and they settled for $55 million to settle that lawsuit. And it was a deceptive practice lawsuit pertaining to commission, basically forcing home sellers to pay buyer's commission. So there's a lot changing. I mean, these are massive brokerage companies. And as soon as the dust settles here, I suspect we're going to have long lasting permanent changes to the way that agents are getting commission. And again, that problem starts at the top, the National Association of Realtors. Another thing I wish they would stop doing is teaching people how to cheerlead, start teaching people how to use data like my broker does. As you can see, Anywhere also did a settlement and that was one of the first dominoes to fall. Like Remax, this was a commission lawsuit. And this is really paving the way for consumers to hit pretty much every single broker shop around the nation if they felt forced to pay for the buyer's 
agent. And again, that's a common practice. I want to read a little bit of this article to show you guys what NAR has essentially done since all of these lawsuits have started taking place. And honestly, it's a little bit cringy, but the name of this article is no more business as usual. Here's what NAR needs to change next. Leadership changes are occurring at the National Association of Realtors against a backdrop of negative publicity and class action lawsuits. It wasn't just the lawsuits. There's been so many scandals at the National Association of Realtors. It's mind-blowing. The 2023 president, Kenny Parcel, whose position represents NARS members, was recently forced to resign following charges of sexual misconduct and workplace harassment. Unbelievable. That's the president of NAR at the very top. How depressing is that? I mean, seriously, how depressing is that? Meanwhile, CEO Bob Goldberg, the ongoing head of staff, has announced his retirement effective at the end of 2024. And that has been re-endorsed by NAR leadership until then, although efforts are underway in advance to identify his successor. And that was probably like, I don't know this guy, but he was probably one of the good guys. And he's probably sick and tired of what's going on. He's probably been warning people about it. And now that something's being done and people are acting surprised, he's probably out of here. Who knows? It could be many reasons. Simply replacing these positions and expecting the successors to make sweeping changes is unrealistic at best and deceptive at worst. And that's 100% right. They need more than just to change the position. It needs to be a complete overhaul of the industry. NAR, the largest trade association in the country with 1.56 million members, is actually less now, has issues that go much deeper than the recent harassment scandal, distasteful as it may be. The fact that it took New York Times expose for NAR to even acknowledge those claims and eliminate the principal offenders reflects the culture of entitlement, intimidation, and denial flowing from an outdated structure that breeds mediocrity and results in wasteful spending. That right there, y'all, is one of the most real statements I have ever heard as far as how NAR works. I could not agree with that more. The members of NAR should expect their dues, which account for 80% of NAR's revenue, to be used wisely. Multiple six and seven figure salaries for present and past executives, generous travel and fringe benefits, legal expenses and settlements and lavish underutilized facilities don't always sit well with members, especially in today's environment. So they're wasting their money on trash. They're literally throwing their money away on, uh, you know, lavish things and they're putting it into the hands of politicians. And think about this. Who pays for that? Think about it. The homeowner pays for that. Literally, the homeowners of America right now are funding the National Association of Realtors because without the homeowners, there is no National Association of Realtors. There is no realtors. This is a huge, disgusting problem. It's a very outdated structure. There is so much greed and corruption going on. Thank God that someone's finally doing something about it. NAR is a powerful organization that does good things for the real estate industry. Okay, whatever. And there are, of course, thousands of talented, hardworking NAR members and employees whose contributions produce many effective programs and outcomes. For those stakeholders, and to avoid tarnishing its positive contributions, NAR must address its decaying underbelly. But before any single realtor member or staff leader can affect meaningful change, the powers that be within NAR must concede that serious problems exist and they must commit to solving them and support the hired and elected leaders charged with implementation. Otherwise, the status quo will continue and the efforts of new well-meaning leaders will be futile. Personally, I think this is a long time coming. Something similar happened during the great financial crisis to loan officers. Loan officers and lenders were completely re-regulated, specifically our commissions. And to put this in perspective, during the great financial collapse, loan officers could make four to four and a half percent, just the loan officer for doing the loan. Fast forward to today, they've reduced the commission about 60% to roughly one and a quarter to one and a half points 
per loan transaction. And I believe that being a lender and loan officer is way harder, personally, this is my feelings, is way harder than being a realtor. So there's no way in heck that I believe that realtors should be getting paid double what a loan officer is getting paid for. That is just my opinion, but nevertheless, you guys, again, this is a long time coming. And I hope through all of these lawsuits, not only are they gonna re-regulate how agents are getting paid, but I also hope they're gonna implement more programs to flush out the bad realtors. This will be something very intriguing to watch because again, it affects not just the National Association of Realtors, it's also drastically impacting big brokerages like Remax and KW and companies like that. So we'll really pay attention to this. Hopefully there's some sweeping action. Hopefully things are re-regulated to better protect the consumer because that's exactly what I'm talking about. And in my opinion, one of the most important things when it comes to the National Association of Realtors. But obviously we know they've been falling drastically short and hopefully with changes that will no longer happen. Now, other than that, guys, hopefully you guys got some new insights, value and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I wish you luck and I hope you win.